What's going on guys? It's your boy One of a Kind. Welcome back to part two now. And in today's video of the Rivala rebuild, guys, we're gonna go ahead and uh tear out the tank out of this one. Um, I had a lot of difficulty doing it in the previous video, a lot of unforeseen circumstances. But today, guys, we're gonna go ahead and not only tear the fuel tank out, clean everything else, put the fuel tank back in, put new lines in. We're going to put the center console back down, and um, yeah, I think that's all we're all we're gonna do. And change the lines. I don't know if I said that, change the fuel lines. And um, and do a uh, fiberglass repair to the uh, the floorboard. So, not only am I going to do all that, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the price of what it's going to cost me to do all that too in the time. Um, we're going to go through every step of the process and uh, yeah, so I feel like it'd be kind of cool for you guys to kind of get like a, a realistic approach to kind of how much this is going to cost and, and everything else. You guys can, you know, if you guys want to rebuild the boat, you're expecting it. But um, anyway guys, enough talking. Let's get to uh, tearing out this tank and... Hopefully we can do it. <laughs> we'll see you guys. All right, guys. So as you guys can see, I went ahead and already pulled the lines out of the actual uh, tank. And I didn't get that on camera, but I'll show you guys the lines. They were probably original with the boat from 1980. I mean, they were just so rotted, disgusting, and just... They should have been changed about 10 years ago. Anyway, so I pulled those out already. Um, we already got our bolts unscrewed. We got the wood out of the sides for whatever reason. He put wood panels. I don't know. Whatever. Um... But we're going back to the whaler days a little bit. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's like spray foamed in. And that's why we can't pull the tank. So I have to go ahead and get all that foam out from underneath there. And um, kind of pry the tank from underneath. And I feel like once we do that, then we'll kind of be able to lift the tank up, get it out, clean out the cavity. Because it's got a bunch of leaves and all this other stuff in there. And then uh, be able to put the tank back in. So <sighs> we have to pull more foam out, which is going to suck. Well guys, we're already twenty dollars into the uh, twenty dollars into this video. I already bought a, I just bought a pry bar from Home Depot. So hopefully this will kind of help me lift the tank up and get this out. Um, so hopefully this works. Um, we'll see. I hope it fits, and I hope it kind of helps us get the tank out a little bit easier. So man, this tank has been a pain in the butt. But let's start prying this sucker out and see what we can get going. All right, guys, so let me go ahead and explain what I was doing in this clip. I didn't go ahead and, and talk about it when I was filming it, but basically, guys, the setup that only worked for me was this setup right here, which is I, I used two car jacks. Um, just got them out of my truck, my dad's truck. And as you guys can see here, I have my chain underneath the tabs of the tank, and it was bending the tabs really kind of sketchy way how to get this thing up, but I, there was no other way to get a grip on this thing. So as you guys see, I'm just kind of checking it out, everything else, um, turning it, and then here me and my dad are prying the tank out, trying to help it as much as possible. And I was just going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, slowly but surely trying to pry it out. And you know, one turn at a time, and you know, soon enough, there's going up to this next clip, you guys will be able to hear the foam literally cracking, like it's popping, like it's so close to getting up. Man, this was definitely one of the most painful things I had done though. Foam. It's coming up. Son of a gun. I got it. I got it. Yes. We're broken free, baby. <laughs> God, it's moving it. Oh, 
Oh yeah, this is... <laughs> you just can't make this up. It's freaking pouring raining now. And the tank's almost coming up though. Should we pry the rest of it? Dude, really? Alrighty guys, well I know the coverage has been a little bit spotty, but here's where we're at. So, we were able to get the tank off of the floor. Um, we got it wedged up by these boards right now. And this tank is just extremely heavy. So, I was wondering, you know, why? And then I looked inside uh, the fuel sender. I've got about probably still half a tank's worth of gas. So, I'm gonna go ahead and have, I got three five gallon buckets right there. I'm gonna go ahead and have to pump out 15 gallons of gas, a bad gas, and hopefully that's enough. So we can go ahead and lift this tank out, clean it up, and then go ahead and clean out the fuel cavity and get, get all that prepped and ready to go. So. So guys, this isn't gonna be fun. Not looking forward to this, but you gotta do what you gotta do. Alrighty guys, so we got the fuel tank out, we got the floor panel out of the boat, making some decent progress, and um, let me show you guys what we're gonna have to do to the floor panel. So guys, as you can see, um, you guys can pretty much tell, this is the only thing in the boat, to my knowledge, and fingers crossed, hopefully, that is actually rotted. So, it looks original, it probably is, but I mean, as you guys can tell, I mean, it's just, it's toast. I mean, it's it. all this has to come up, I'm gonna change out the deck plate and we're gonna change out the two backing plates um, where the seats are. And I'm actually, look, I'm gonna keep the backing plates, but I'm actually looking. So, uh, I'll go ahead and tear everything out and then uh, glass it back in. Step one complete. Look how bad this is, guys. Holy. I mean, this is just toast. Absolute toast. So, this panel right here is a little cracked. We'll see if we can go ahead and repair that. Um, we're gonna need to. Uh, but, all this wood's gotta come out, guys. It's all gotta come out. So, let's get to it.
Yes, ma'am. Alrighty guys, so let me go ahead and explain what's going on here. So I had finished cutting up the floor. I got my my area kind of cleaned up, nice and cleaned up, and I'm gonna go ahead and measure here. And I actually got some free scrap wood from Home Depot. So if you ever got if you ever need a little bit of wood, always go ahead and ask the Home Depot guys. Um, they always, you know, cut wood, have scraps, and most times they'll give it to you for free. So I'm getting my measurements here, I'm gonna you know trace it on my free piece of wood, you know, who doesn't love free? And then I'm gonna go ahead and cut. So kind of just measuring out my dimensions, making sure it's gonna be the right fit, um, making sure I don't have to do any later adjustments. So the next step here is we're gonna go ahead and make some peanut butter. So I had a little bit of uh, gaps in between. So here's what I did guys. I used some polyester resin and here's me pouring the quart of polyester resin in there. And the reason why I have a respirator on is not because of resin, it's because of what I just showed right there being the fume silica. So what it is, is it's really ground down like fiberglass. And one, if that stuff gets in the air and it gets in your lungs, it ain't gonna be good guys. So wear a respirator, wear some sort of uh, protection and I mix it up got it to a really really thick consistency went ahead and started pouring it in the gaps as you guys can see here you know I learned my lesson from you know the whaler and everything else you don't want gaps when you're gonna be using the, a sheet of fiberglass over it so I'm using this peanut butter to kind of give me a nice little sturdy base to fill in that gaps and, and make it a nice even surface I'm gonna be glassing over so kind of just you know reinforcing everything putting the board down um, fill, filling it in with that uh, paintbrush there and um, really not much to it guys, you really just kind of make sure it's nice and even and uh, so it's not kind of bumpy and stuff. Next part was to do it to that top piece too. So I cooked up a nice little batch too for the front. Just kind of, again, filling in those nice little cracks, not really doing too much, just making sure we don't have uh, too much space that is gonna be open. So now here guys, I just had a thing of polyester resin, no extra uh, fume silica in it. And I'm just gonna go ahead and pour some resin all over the fiberglass. And let me go ahead and explain what fiberglass I used. So, and I didn't show it in this clip guys, but I did go ahead and lightly sand the, uh, the base so it would have something to stick to. And um, after that, I put my sheet of 1708 uh, bi-axle uh, fiberglass mat. And that is basically chopped strand on one side. Um, you know, it's kind of what you want to do for the base on, on typically most things. From what I've learned, I'm not a professional fiberglass guy, but from what I've learned. And um, the other side is more of like a, a woven um, kind of cloth. So you're getting the best of both worlds. So I'm kind of just spreading it out with polyester resin. And this was actually my first time using polyester resin, guys. And honestly, cost wise, it was nice and cheap, but after using epoxy resin man it's just so much better in my opinion a lot stronger you know everything else and i don't know i'd rather use epoxy from now on probably won't ever use you know anything else so guys um here we're just gonna be doing the same thing to the front um really not much to it uh just kind of glassing it over and yeah you know making sure everything's nice and, and sticking so Alrighty guys, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it guys. It means the world. I'm so sorry I haven't uploaded um, in a long time. It's been busy with school, work, and everything else. And like I said guys, I wanna bring out the best possible quality content to you guys. So I'm gonna try my best to do more videos more consistently, but I feel like this video is pretty good guys. Um, anyway, there is, this video is not done. This is part one of two of uh, this Robalo, you know, kind of taking out the tank, putting back in the tank, because if I were to make it one video, it would have been like 40 minutes long, guys. I have so many freaking clips um, just for this like entire segment of this series. So, gonna do a part two, gonna be coming out later this week, but um, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, pop up my Instagram right here. Uh, it's underscore Zach underscore Tuttle underscore. And so, go ahead and follow me on Instagram, guys. You guys can see um, behind, a little bit of behind the scenes. I kind of post some behind the scenes on the story. And uh, if you guys want to go ahead and just reach out to me, if you got any questions, whatever, go ahead and let me know. Um, go ahead and shoot me a DM, guys. I respond to DMs, and I appreciate all the support, guys. Anyway, guys, 
Thank you guys so much for watching, and stay tuned for part two, and more videos coming soon. It's been y'all boy, and I'm out. Peace.